So my dad's original guitar was a gift from his band to him. He was living in Phoenix at the time, and he was playing in a club called JD's. And he had worked up a really good crowd there. And Richie Albright and the other guys that were playing with him at the time, they wanted to give him a gift. They wanted to give him a guitar. They found a guitar in a pawn shop for like 40 bucks. And they knew a bartender who did leather work. And they had him cover it in leather, which was such a strange choice, but like went on to become this iconic guitar. What are we doing here today? Well, we're playing with this Wayland guitar that the great folks at Fender have made. There's only going to be like 70 of them. This is a replication of my dad's original guitar. There was only four or five of his real guitars that existed, and there's only like really two that were his main ones, which my mom and I still have. I mean, I really came to Fender and said, let's make this. I brought them to my mom's house. And we went and got my dad's original guitars, the number one and the number two. And a wonderful team of folks took them apart, looked at them from the inside out, basically, and came back and, and designed this thing based on kind of an amalgamation of the two guitars. My name is David Brown. I'm a Fender Custom Shop Master Builder. I've been here. Uh, on and off for 23 years now, but as a master builder, I'm starting my second year. So we met up with Shooter. He actually has two of them. Both of them were mid-50s tellies in butterscotch with the leather wrap. What we decided to do in the end was to do an amalgamation of the two, original one, original two, simply because number one had a lot of modifications. Throughout the years, he had leather pick guards, then went to a plastic pick guard, modified the bridge to accommodate EMG pickups. The bridge was all messed up. The electronics were off on number one, but we liked the look of number one. Then we looked at number two. Number two was more of a stock piece. Number two hadn't been modified so much. In looking at both of them, we photographed both of them extensively, and we decided to do use the body and neck of number one with the electronics and hardware of number two. And in doing that, then we realized, well, what do we want to do? How do we want to present the leather? I suggested, why don't we do a snapshot guitar of what it was like in the mid 70s after the banjo key had been installed, maybe the EMG pickups that were later, uh, later on and put in there weren't there yet. So this is basically what the guitar would have looked like around 1975 or mid 70s, late 70s, before the addition of the other modified parts. The banjo key, it's a banjo key because it's used on a banjo. I'm sure Waylon saw that and he goes like, hmm, I could use that for this. The banjo key is a one-to-one -one ratio. So what that means is that these are probably 10 to one. That means that you gotta turn this 10 times for this thing to go around once. This is a one-to-one -one ratio, meaning that it's like a violin key where you turn it and once and it's one revolution here. So it's very, very touchy. This being the upper note preset, this is the lower note preset. Once you have the low E set, you tighten that up, then you tune the, the, the key to, to whatever note you want. In this case, it's D, and then you lock this down. So now you're able to bounce between the two notes. The other special features on this is gonna be obviously the, the hand tool leather wrap. This is Cody Hickson's work. He is from Great Point Leatherworks. My old friend, Cody Hickson, did all the leather for this. Many, many years ago, to the summer of 2005, I'm on tour with Toby Keith. They made us go out and like sign stuff at these tables. So we were like out there signing, and this guy comes up and he goes, I got a picture of you and your dad on stage. I want you to sign it. And I look at this picture, and it's not me in the picture. It's actually my dad's drummer at the time, Jeff Hale's son, Adam Hale. 
And my first instinct was like, okay, do I tell him the truth and let him down, and this takes a lot longer, or do I just sign it and pretend that I didn't? And I decided not to. I said, I told him, I said, it's not me. I said, I'm sorry, that's not me. You know, he said, okay, cool. Fast forward 2006, I'm having this crisis, and I'm like, it's weird, I would like never ever like talk to my dad or something, but I was like, just give me a sign that I'm doing the right thing. Like I was having a hard time and I was going through a lot of shit with our band at the time. And I was like, just give me a sign I'm doing the right thing. And I got back to the bus and our tour manager at the time, Steven Gudis, was like, shooter, you gotta get to the back of the bus. You gotta see something. And I went to the back of the bus and here's that guy who brought that picture. Cody Hickson, he had bought a Telecaster and he'd covered it in leather like this and gave it to me. And I was like, well, there's my sign that he was there to give me this guitar for encouragement. So all these years later when we were doing this, I was like, I want him to do the leather. What's my hope for it? Well, I mean, my hope for it was that I got to keep one before they got off the shelves, which I got, which is awesome. But I mean, I don't know. I hope it, I hope it, it goes out there and does so well they make more of them because I, I want them floating in the world, you know? I, I think it's an important guitar, and I, I think that it's important that other people start playing it now, you know? And so I think the idea of releasing this to the world through the premier guitar company of the world, the one that made the original, to come in now all these years later, 50 years later, like, put these out in the wild, I think is a, that's my hope for it. And man, my dad would be super pumped. He would probably like kind of make you guys make him a bunch more of them to take on the road, you know, so he can leave the old ones home. But he'd be blown away by it for sure. I know a lot of people that are going to be like, I've had a million people ask me like, hey man, can you put me on the list to get one? I'm like, no, nope. <laughs> sorry. Who will be the first person to break one on stage? That's the big question. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> maybe that'll happen. I want that.